So, Patty, can we go right back to the early days of when you started pistol shooting? How did you get involved? Well, it was really just by accident. I uh, met this guy who was a shooter, used to sit outside the range, read a book. And they said, oh, come and have a shot, Paddy. I said, oh, no. I said, I can't look down the sides of a rifle. I'd be hopeless. Oh, we'll fix you. So they put a browning in my hand, put patches over my left eye on my glasses. Now, this is where you aim underneath the white and squeeze the trigger. And so I got all the shots on the target, most of them in the black. Oh, I said, this is good. I like this. And that's how it all started. Did you have a coach in the early days or yes, did that come later on? Uh, John Davidson taught me how to shoot. He was, um, he was the guy who taught me and coached me and was my mentor in my shooting. How long into the journey as a pistol shooter did you see the Olympics as a, as a possible goal and something that you could achieve? Well, uh, well, I didn't realise, but uh, John said to me, he said, you know, the, the ladies are going to shoot in 1984. Oh, I said, are they? And I think it's an important point to, to make that 84 was the first time there was female shooting at the Olympic Games. So you were a bit of a pioneer in that respect. I just loved shooting and uh, I, we were going to all the competitions in Sydney around each month there was a shoot somewhere I'd always go to that we used to go up to Orange to shoot and um, I just just loved shooting and I just I just shot the scores and got into the squad and so that's how it all just started who would you put down as your greatest influence on your career to get you to that Olympic level well the only person that taught me anything was John when I when I was going to the the Olympics I said to John I used to go over there and train, and he'd be there with me. And I'd say, bought myself a recorder. I said, I want your voice on this recorder. I said, when I go over there, I've got nobody. I'm going over there, I've got nobody with me. And I want to be able to hear somebody that I know. And he said, I can't teach you anything. You know, you know what you're doing. I said, that doesn't matter. I just want to hear your voice. And so he was just my mentor that just went right through with me. What was it like in the Australian teams in those early days going overseas? You said you didn't have coaches travel with you, just a couple of athletes and off you went? I don't know whether I should say this, I'm a, I'm a woman, you see. So the thing is that uh, it's always very difficult being a woman in a, the team. They, um, you always feel that the men are prioritised, you know. But that didn't worry me, I just, I just got up there and shot the best of my abilities. And quite often that was better than the men anyway. It <laughs> could be, yeah. yeah. Well, I went away. I went away on every trip. When I started to shoot for Australia, I was in the team every time. You were regarded in your career as being mentally very tough. Where do you think that comes from? I think that I'm lucky that I've got it. I've worked all my life. I was a machine operator in an office. Uh, I had work to do and I would just sit there and do it. And I could shut off everything else and just, just sit there and just do my work. I was a, In all my training, I was always top of my class. The process of qualifying to go to the Olympics in 1984, what was it like in Australia back then? How did, how did you qualify? Did have to well, you had to go away and shoot in competition, you know, like maybe go to the shoot up in Newcastle or the Orange. Had to, you had to go to competitions. Uh, they had the CMPC shoots and you had to submit your scores of what you were shooting. And then you had to go down to a camp. Sometimes we had them up in Queensland, but we went to Canberra to uh, the range down there, and we'd have to shoot scores down there. And that's when you qualified. That's when the hard work started. But then I had to work harder than what I was doing just to shoot. 84 Olympics. Reasonably successful from the Australian point of view. Four gold, eight silver, 12 bronze. Do you remember mixing with those athletes and, and some of the names that you went away with in 84? It's really strange, you know, you go, to the, you go to the Olympics. When you go down there to have breakfast in the canteen, everyone sat in their little groups. They sat in their little groups. They sat in their little groups because they were the people that they knew. And I was the only lady pistol shooter and I went with Sylvia, who was the rifle shooter. And so she was shooting different times than me, so we hardly crossed paths unless we went to bed because we were in the same room. So you, you're really wandering around on your own. You know, people don't 
it, they don't really mix. Well, they didn't mix with me because I, I'm, I was 52 when I went to the Olympics. So all these other athletes over there are young. They were young people. I was. I would have been old to them. I think I would have been one of the oldest people in the in the team at 52. Yeah, you were in, in the Olympic final. You were about, around 10 to 12 years older than the gold and silver medalists and uh, 20 odd years older than the rest of the field. So uh, do you think people maybe looked at you and went, is she an athlete? Yeah, that's right, you see, yeah. But you see, people don't realise shooting is a wonderful uh, sport to get into. I mean, I've got one leg shorter than the other from a car accident. I used to be a golfer. I just won the gold medal at golf and I was going to play golf all my life. And, and then I couldn't walk the course. And so people with these kind of uh, disabilities, you can still stand and shoot. Get yourself fit and put your mind to it. It's a great sport. Take me through the Olympic competition. How were you leading into, into the qualifying, nerves, uh, anticipation, excitement? Well, the thing is, you know, I'd had so much international experience that I felt quite comfortable on the range. And I was very fit. And being fit just stood me in great stead. I reckon that was the, the best thing that I could have done to get myself as fit as I was. The only time that my heart thumped were my last five shots on dueling. I was, I shot 49, 49, I shot 50, 50, 50. And the last five shots, I never thought I could keep my arms straight to come up on the target. But with all the training that I'd done, I had good trigger control. I, I shot by my breathing. And I was the only time I took my earmuffs off. And the guy behind me, big American, he says, you got him, Paddy. I looked in my scope and I had another 50. Now that, I got that because I had trained and trained and trained and I was fit. I wasn't nervous. I was, I was relaxed to a certain degree because I was very fit. I knew, knew people on the range. It was just, it just was like going to a shoot. You, know, you couldn't think about that you were at the Olympics. You were just going to a shoot. That's what you've got to mentally think, you know. You can't put too much pressure on yourself. You don't go there to shoot scores, you go there to shoot groups. My philosophy was all the time, shoot a good group. You actually shot off for the bronze medal. Yep. So there was a fair bit of pressure on that one and the competitor, I think was about 30 years old. Yeah, she, oh, she, was, a, she was in the army. She was a young Chinese girl. She looked about 18, I think. Anyway, I beat her, <laughs> so that was the main thing. Yeah, it was a Chinese shooter, uh, Lu Hai Ying. She was 32 years of age. Oh, was she 32? And you, and you beat her, so, it, you know. I was 52, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'd, I'd had quite a few shoot-offs and I'd won the whole lot of them. The experience stood me in great stead. The experience that I'd had before I went to the Olympics got me through. So you came back to Australia, as you said, you were Athlete of the Year, um, obviously a lot of accolades, winning the first ever shooting medal for Australia. It's pretty special seeing that uh, shooting's been in the Olympics since the early, since the first modern Olympics. Did you retire after 84 when you came back? No, I retired in 88. Um, I never went to another Olympics, but I went to World Cups after that. After the Olympics, we went to uh, Munich and I came second to Russia. But I went to interesting places to shoot. So we went to East Germany, we went to Seoul, and that was when the wall was still up. It was really quite interesting going to East Germany to shoot, because we were in Munich, and then we drove over the, uh, into East Germany, and because in Munich there's beautiful Mercedes cars, flower boxes, and then you go into East Germany, it was so drab and sad place it was. But. Uh, well, they, they held the World Championships and of course they thought it was wonderful because the um, government there put things in the shops that all these people never ever had. You could, you could have no idea, it was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. I retired while I was still a master grade shooter and I didn't want to be down in a lower grade because I trained, I still kept shooting, I still trained, I still stayed up on top up to 88 and I had no life at all shooting and I said I've had enough just retired 
Well, it was a wonderful journey and uh, we really appreciate you taking us on it and, and reliving it for us. Well, I hope you learned something from it and, and it's my uh, pleasure to do it for you and hope it encourages somebody else to have a dream. Coming up, we get the play-by-play -play at the women's 25-metre pistol match. Let's jump right into the action here at the Brisbane International Shooting Centre for the women's 25-metre pistol final. Top eight competitors. We've got three on the line here. Sue Guy from New South Wales, Siobhan Smith from Queensland, along with Marizel Berger, shooting remotely out of Mildura, Talia Woodruff. At Whiteman Park, we've got Stephanie Jong, Shivi Nichols and Katie Nichols, and our Olympic representative, Elena gala Elbovich, shooting out of Oakley, Victoria. So we have results in, and it looks like it's a tie between Berger and Woodruff. They both had one hit in the fourth series. So they're gonna shoot off now for eighth position. The winner will progress in the in the competition. So once we have this shot, we'll update the other scores. A burger first shot away. So burger was one hit in the shoot off. She's eliminated in eighth position. Congratulations to her in the shoot off. Uh, Talia Woodroff responded with two hits as so she continues in the competition, currently sitting in seventh place with an overall total of three hits. Just ahead of her, Diong from WA with five hits. And there's our top, Gallobovich out in front with 11 hits. Tie for second between Guy and Nichols with nine hits. Tie for fourth between Shiri Nichols and Siobhan Smith with eight hits. De Jong with five hits, Woodroff with three hits. We'll get our seventh place shooter at the end of this five series. Fourth shot and a hit for Smith. So, Guy with one and Smith with one. That's it, Woodroff with one hit. So Woodruff is eliminated in seventh position. Again, just updating Galiobovich in first place with 13 hits. Shibi Nichols with three hits in the last series jumps up into a clear second with 11 hits. And then tied for third between Guy and Nichols. One hit each in the last series. They're on 10. Siobhan Smith on nine. Still in striking distance. De Jong on six. So first shot away. Guy with four out of five, Smith with one out of five. So Dijon out of Whiteman Park is finishing sixth position. He finishes with nine hits. So there you have Galiobovich with three hits in the last series on 16. Jumps ahead of Sue Guy uh, equal with Shibu Nichols, who had three hits. Guy had four hits in the last series and they tied on 14. In fourth position is Katie Nichols on 12, still in striking distance, and Siobhan Smith. When the pressure goes on her here now live at the venue, she's on 10 hits. So Smith with a hit. Smith with two hits, Guy with one hit. And there it is, yeah, Siobhan Smith will drop out in fifth position. So Gale Obovich, four hits in the last series, goes up to 20. Tie for second between Sue Guy and Shibi Nichols with 16 hits and two points back to Katie Nichols. So ready to go here. This will complete 40 shots after these five in this series. Gale Obovich really making a move with four in the last series to go to 20 points four ahead of Sue Guy and Shibi Nichols and six ahead of Katie Nichols who's in fourth position. Guy with a hit, first shot, 
only competitor here now firing at the Brisbane International Shooting Centre. Two hits now for Guy. Good under pressure. Two Guy, three hits on a roll. Miss on the fourth. And a miss on the fifth. So three hits for Sue Guy. But a good response from Sue Guy in the last round. Three hits. Just gives her a, a three point buffer from Shibby Nichols. And two points further back is Katie Nichols, who's in danger of dropping out in fourth position, but that'll be a fantastic result for the young shooter. I'm sure great experience. Update of scores there. Gale Alpovich with two hits. She goes to 22. Sue Guy 19. Shibby Nichols on 17. And Katie Nichols finishes in fourth position. Congratulations, Katie. Great shooting over there in Whiteman Park. Coming down to the pointy end now. Top three, Gale Alpovich, Guy and Shibby Nichols. So the scores there, Galeobovich on 22, Guy on 19, and Nichols on 17. They're still within striking distance. Galeobovich has given herself a little bit of a buffer. It's going to be a fight here for the silver and bronze. And uh, one of those competitors can go through and challenge Galeobovich at the top of the table. Sue Guy on the line by herself here in Brisbane. Galeobovich at Oakley and Nichols at Whiteman Park in WA. Well, first shot, a miss for Guy. Second shot, a miss. Pressure coming on. Point two or higher for a hit. A hit there, third shot. So one up in this series for Sue Guy. She'll want to come home strong. Yeah, just a, off the edge there, just outside the 10.2 for a fourth shot. And finally, gets two hits in that series. So it'll take up the 21. Oh, Gally Olovich with four hits, gone to 26. He's stormed out to the lead. Nichols with no hits will be eliminated and claiming the bronze medal. Well done, Shibby Nichols. Bronze medal. So now it comes down to the final five shots between Sue Guy and Elena Gally Olovich. She needs five hits to keep the competition going. Gally Olovich. Shooting it open in Victoria. Sue Guy here live at the venue. A miss. And she can't win it, but she can still come home strong. Second shot a hit for Sue Guy. Fourth shot is a hit. Kelly Olvich will win the final. We'll just wait for the scores to come through. But Sue Guy, silver medalist. Oh, another four hits for Kelly Olvich, finishing with 30 in the gold medal position. Shibby Nichols out of WA Bronze. Katie Nichols in fourth. Siobhan Smith here in Queensland in fifth position. De Jong in sixth. Woodrock in seventh. And Berger in eighth place. We now move to the men's 10 metre air pistol with competitors to the stage as the top four battle it out for gold. It's quick. Wolf Williams and Porter shooting here at the Brisbane International Shooting Centre, while Dan Repicoli, our Olympic representative, shoots remotely from New South Wales at the Sydney International Shooting Centre. So Mulligan's finished in fifth, Cassegrain sixth, Gray seventh, and Sides in eighth. 
So Rapper Coley holding a 4.1 shot lead at 182.9, quick at 178.8, and then 171. Point one four Wolf Williams, who's jumped into third place ahead of Porter. Just point one difference between Wolf Williams and Porter for fourth place. 10 2 for Porter and a 9 3 for Williams. So Porter will go ahead of him after the first shot. Second shot still to come. Quick with a 9 8. And Rapicoli with a 10.6. A great shooting. And Dan Rapicoli. Point eight behind Porter. A quick away first with an 8-2. A 10-3 from Wolf Williams. Good response. And Porter with a nine. Oh, the pressure told there for Porter. So Porter dropping out. A 190.2 to a 190.7 for Wolf Williams. So 0 0.2 points and Porter drops out in fourth position. Well done. So that's six point lead now for Repicoli at the top. 202.8. Quick with 196.8 in Third place at the moment is 190.7. A bronze medal position to be decided next. Quick with a 10.5, good response. Wolf Williams with an 8.7, that's going to make it tough. Rapicoli an 8.9, we fell away there, but uh, they still remain top of the table. Shot number 22 coming up, and that will decide our bronze medal. Now let's see if Jason Wolf Williams can find the centre of the target. Maybe he can get enough to get through. Quick with a 9 3. Wolf Williams looking for a strong finish. A 10. Well done to Wolf Williams. Absorbing the pressure. And a 9 7 for Ripper Coley. So it's going to be Wolf Williams, 209.4, coming in the bronze medal position. Well done, Jason Wolf Williams from South Australia. So the shoot off now for gold. 4.8 behind, as quick as behind Rippercoli. So Rippercoli, 221.4, 216.6. Bruce Quick will respond here. Try and put a couple dead centre. Quick with a nine. Oh, Repicoli a 10.5. That's just been updated. So, solid finish for Dan Repicoli. One shot to go for the gold medal. Repicoli with a 10.5. Quick with a nine. Here we go. Gold medal on the line. Quick with a 9-3. Let's see what Repicoli can do. 10.1. So Repicoli will claim the gold medal in the PAPSQ Grand Prix event. And it, there it is. Repicoli with a 242. One point off his national record. And 234.9 for quick. Jansen Wolf Williams coming in third. Quarter fourth. And looking down the placings there. Mulligan fifth. Cassegrain sixth. Gray seventh. And sides in eighth place. We hope you've enjoyed this look into the world of Australian competitive pistol shooting as the range report comes to a close. To start today, follow our socials on Facebook and Instagram and we look forward to seeing new faces out on the range.